Uh, back once more with Stephen Poacher, former Carlo um, coach and current down minor football coach. Can you talk to me, Stephen, about game management? Because so often we see Dublin in the middle of the game, somebody will get the ball and they'll kind of slow up, put the arm up in the air. And I suppose this is, at the moment, that's kind of seen as, as game management. Maybe it's a call for a play that's about to happen. How important is it to teams and how much focus do they put on it? Listen, it's it's one of the most important aspects of the game. You know how you manage a game is, is so so important. And I, I go back to I talked about that Donegal team before. Like Donegal team in two thousand and twelve were unbelievably good at controlling the pace of a game. You know they played the game on their terms. You know and Dublin are now doing exactly the same. When Dublin need to crank it, they'll crank it. When they need to go hard, they'll go hard. When they need to slow it down, they'll slow it down. You know and that is a very very important part of the game. And I suppose the other thing that's probably under underestimated in this country. We play our best competition. We play our best competition, which is the National League, in horrible conditions. And this year was probably the worst conditions of the lot. You know, we, we had more storms than, 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 than bloody, I don't know, weekends. It, it was just mental. But games are now played in, in tough conditions. So sometimes you might have to manage a half against the wind or you might have to play a half with the wind. And how you manage that is so important to the outcome of the game. You know, and I, and I don't think teams place enough emphasis on it. Now, Dublin take it to a new level. You know, obviously the physio and the doctor are working together and coming onto the field, and you know, it, it, it's they, they are the masters at it. You know, and, and Tyrone are very good at it too as well. But listen, there's other things. You know, calls and signals are important. You mentioned calls and signals. For example, at Carlo, we had 12 calls, uh, and I had them on a sheet labeled out, and 12 simple calls, 12 names, a couple of numbers as well, and we would have used these calls. You know, we would use these calls quite a bit in games and. I'm not afraid to share them now because obviously the lads have moved on. They're not using the same calls anymore. And I've moved on and I'm doing exactly the same. But it's, for example, one of our calls might have been if we got a score, 45. So what 45 meant was if we got a score and we didn't have enough bodies up the field chain, say for example, we, we attacked them with only three up, rather than press the kick out, we would have dropped off to the 45 and let the goalkeeper give the corner back the ball. Because there wasn't much point in us trying to chase up the field press a kick out when we didn't have the, the numbers there to do that, you know. <coughs> Excuse me. Another call we would have had was 66. And 66 was, was a kick out call. And the reason we used 66 was, was very straightforward. It was set the forwards up again. Six forwards, six defenders. So 66. Our two midfielders drifted across to one side. So the opposition thought we were going this side. Our wing forward moved across and 11 then went into the space to collect the kick out. Simple little call, and that might have been a little out kick out or a little out ball that we would have we would have needed, you know. <laughs> Excuse me. Another big one that we would have used, Shane, was rest on the ball. And you talked about Dublin, they were fantastic at this. And I actually got this idea actually from the, 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 the biggest uh, probably what's the right terminology to describe the, the most the biggest cynic in, in coaching in the whole time And I remember reading this book, The Anatomy of a Winner. And he talked about his time at Chelsea when he had a really good team when he first burst onto the scene. And he talked about how they were coached in training to rest on the ball. So for two or three minutes, take the sting out of the game. But not only are you resting on the ball, you're, you're sorry, not only are you keeping possession of the ball, you're actually getting a breather. You're actually getting a breather. And the opposition don't know. So we would have called that quite a bit. And Tyrone, Tyrone picked up on it. Because I remember reading into the Tyrone game, reading the local papers here, obviously in the north, the, the Carlo lads wouldn't have been exposed to the build-up to the game the way I was because the Irish news obviously would have would have run a lot of uh, stories in the throne game, you know. And Peter Hart done an interview and he says, we know what we're going up against in Dr. Cullen Park. We know if we give this ball away, we might get it back for three or four minutes, which is unheard of in Gaelic football. So they had picked up on this, Shane. They had picked up on how we had managed games. And the way I look at it is, if you have the ball, the opposition can't hurt you. You know, and that was the key thing that, that we would have done. Now, you're not hurting them. You're in the game. You're growing in the game. You're taking control of the game. Like if an opposition haven't touched the ball for three or four minutes, as soon as they win that back, what is their first thought? Their first thought is to do something frantically. And and nine out of ten, nine times out of ten, they're going to give you the ball straight back again because because they haven't had the ball that long. Someone's going to get it and want to do everything a hundred mile an hour. Whereas you should be the opposite. When you lose the ball after a period of possession against Dublin, so when Dublin have that period of possession, when teams get their hands back on it again, they're going at Dublin. When in fact they should be doing the opposite and keeping it themselves. Now it's not a great for the spectacle for the for the supporter, but you're not really there to entertain people at that level. You're there to win games, you know. So if we were resting the ball, Shane, 
I thought it was our defence and our midfield. Say we had pulled the forward line. Say we had pulled men back to this, okay? And we'd left two. We have three up front, right? We're wrestling with the ball, but what we've got on both sides of the field, what we've got on both sides of the field, and Monaghan were unbelievable at this. We've got width on both sides of the field. So we, we've got both sidelines, a lot of width, okay? So it gives us an option. But the important thing about resting the ball is that you always have a quarterback. You always have a quarterback. So the quarterback takes the switch. So if you if you find yourself in the opposition, they're pushing you and you're under pressure, the quarterback presents for the ball and he dictates how the ball is switched in. You know, if you if you play with a flat line when you're resting the ball, you could get turned over and you're exposed. But without the, with, with the quarterback out the back, some of the present, if one of these guys are in trouble, they can pop that ball out the back. And what we like to do is shift Danielson Ledger would have played the quarterback role for Carlo and would have played it very well, would have dictated rest on it. Say there was four minutes of ever and flowing. A game that went 100 miles an hour, Shane, didn't suit Carlo. Didn't suit them, okay? We realised that. It didn't suit us. We went 100 miles an hour in the second ever game I was with them against London. You know, to come from losing at home to London, with all due respect to London, they were pathetic. Like, but to lose at home to London by four points in a game that just ebbed and flowed, I think the penny struck then. It was like, here, the penny dropped. We need a bit of structure here. We need a bit of plan. And then, obviously, to go and win 11 out of the next 12 National League games, you know, by, by sticking to a process and sticking to a plan and playing the game on your terms. We always try to play the game on our terms. You know, and, and the occasions that we couldn't were, were the games that we lost. And I remember the Sligo manager, the first game of the National League 2019, beat the Sligo by eight points at home in the first game. Great start. And I remember him coming out on the radio after it and saying, I, I've never come across a team that just suffocates the game and takes the life out of it. But I, I, everybody thought it was like, all the boys were going mad, that's disgraceful. Lads, that is an absolute compliment. That's a compliment. Like, I actually took that as a compliment because that's what we want to do. As soon as we went four or five points up, shut this game down, end the story. It's about results, it's about grinding out. And it's not good in the eye. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. But sometimes you have to do that, Shane. Like, when Dublin goes six or seven points up, sometimes there's a period where they just say, look, nothing's going to happen here for five or six minutes. You know, and it, and it has happened. Like, they played Donegal a couple of years ago. And some, somebody was absolutely pillified in the opposition. I can't remember who it was. Dublin kept the ball for three or four minutes, went back to the keeper, went across again. Not a word. People were coming out great game management by Dublin. You know, so it, it's knowing when to do it and when not to do it. You know, and, and I laugh sometimes. You know, you go to these club games and you're playing a club team who have 13 men behind the ball. And, and you know, Kilku, for example, say you're playing Kilku and they're wild defensive and, and you're playing them and we've been playing with Bally Holland and you, the old traditionalists in the stand and Bally Holland saying, kick the ball in. And then some. Man, man out here will, will hear that call and he'll kick it in and they'll just swamp it up and say thank you and move out you know so sometimes you have to rest in the ball because of what way the opposition are set up you know but it, it, it's uh, again it's how you manage the game Shane at crucial stages you know taking the sting out of the game Do you do you appoint certain leaders on the field or is it a situation whereby like you would see, like Johnny Cooper. I know I'm going back to the same point. Johnny Cooper putting yeah. the arm up. Maybe Kieran Kilkenny might do it. Maybe Brian Fenton. Are there certain lads only who are entrusted to do this, or could anyone do it? Because like, if you had everyone doing it, you might have the wrong decisions being made. This is the problem. This is the problem. This is the problem that we would have faced as well. We had lads calling 45. And we had lads calling press at times during games, uh, and you know, at half time they would have been fucking murdering the chase rooms. You know, like the one call if it comes for me, if the call comes from the sideline. Right, if the call comes from the sideline, and it's only a call. So, for example, if if we're calling forty five from the sideline, and two players are trying to press, you know, you're going what? You know, like that's unheard of. You know, if the call comes from the sideline, that's gospel. If the call's coming from three or four individuals in the field, that's where your problems come from, Shane. You know, so it does help if one or two players make those calls. And there would have been times where we would have sort of delegated the responsibility to certain players. For example, we had a free kick routine that we would have kept possession of. Uh, you know, so a long range free kick, we would have disguised it. Everyone thought if we get a free kick inside 65 yards, everyone thought, well, Daniel St. Ledger's going to hit that or Paul Ruddy's going to hit that and they're going to go for a score. But we would have maybe made a call. So it was actually Daniel's name, Ledger. So we would have called Ledger. But as soon as they heard the word Ledger, they knew that that wasn't a score. We're going to keep this ball. You know, so he would have walked up the free kick 
and then Paul would have took it short or somebody else would have took it short. Opposition just switched off for a second. You know, and again, come back and, and Verone actually caught on to I, I don't know, I think they had an insider in the camp somewhere, but, uh, no, but they actually caught on to that because they suffocated our free kicks then. They, even when we had long-range free kicks, they were all very alert around the free kick, waiting for us nearly to do that. So they'd obviously picked up on it in a couple of our previous videos, you know. But it, it, it does take... It, it takes a bit of game intelligence, you know, and I'll give you a good laugh anyway, right? And, and the boys will appreciate this story. The Ballyhole and lads will appreciate this story. We had a couple of calls at Ballyhole, right? And uh, one of them was a player's name. So uh, this has gone back four or five years. So it was Soupy. So Soupy wasn't playing this night, but Soupy was one of our kickout calls. So when we called Soupy, we did a certain thing, you know? So we called Soupy and the boys went, Soupy, Soupy, Soupy. And everybody's doing what they want except one player. And one player standing in the space. And I'm not calling his name, but I, I just said, hey, I call him Jimmy. I said, Jimmy, Soupy. And he turned around and he says, Soupy's not playing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and on the Wednesday night on the Wednesday night we'd worked on it 18 times we'd run 18 kickouts but this is what you're dealing with Shane you know you got to remember like you're not dealing with top level footballers all the time you're dealing with lads who are maybe playing for the love of it and they're only having a bit of crack and they're not really too keen on listening to strategies and game plans and how to manage games so you've got to adapt to what you what you have as well and you've got to you've got to play what you see but at this level at the highest level Game management is so important. Like, for example, we played Derry in the Ulster Minor League a few weeks ago before that we, we got hit by the coronavirus. And we were disappointed getting in at halftime. Derry hit us on the counter-attack with a goal. And it, the halftime score was 1-6 to 1-1. And we had played with a five or six-point breeze at least. At least a five or six-point breeze. I maybe felt a seven or eight-point breeze, you know. And one of the things I said to the young lads at, half, at halftime was, manage this half. Control the ball. If nothing happens for 10 minutes, nothing happens. 14 minutes into the second half, it was 2-6 to 1-1. And we were absolutely delighted. We ended up winning the game 4-8 to 1-3. But that first 15 minutes was, first 10 minutes, sorry, was so important. Because if Derry get four or five in a row, all of a sudden it's game. at game's level and you're never winning that game because they have the momentum. You're struggling. But if you manage that game, take the sting out of it. What happens? They get more frantic. They get frustrated. They start kicking balls over the end line. They start shouting. They start panicking. Anxiousness from the sidelines. That filters into the team. So you manage the game. And then one final point. How do you kind of get that message, either the players doing it themselves or you as a management on the sideline? How do you, if things are going wrong, how do you get the players to sort of understand the situation and change what they're doing to try and break the flow of the game and the opposition's dominance? Well, you have to see the game. I've always said this as well. Like someone said to me, they watched the, the All-Ireland a rerun and you know TG Carr the other day Shane you know and it was uh, Dublin and Kerry and, and one of my friends said to me they couldn't believe the amount of times Kerry kicked the ball into Dublin in the second half you know six or seven times and I couldn't believe they'd done it in the All-Ireland final last year and, and it's something it, you've got to see it from the sideline you've got to see something happening like if you see your full back exposed one on one in the game you've got to see that you've got to react straight away you've got to make those calls but I always look for on-field leadership we were very. I was very fortunate, actually, in, in Ballyhoolan for six years, Shane. I had some fantastic leaders, likes of Paul Murphy, Rooney Murder, Damien Campbell, Damien McCrink. Damien's now the senior manager, but Damien was my manager on the field. You know, I, I had a mini management team in the plane, in on the playing field. Carlo was the same, but a lot of experienced players who who could who could deal with with with, with certain things that, that happened. You know, you had a lot of players who've been around the block. Now a lot of their a lot of their their experience might have been a negative experience or a, or a bad experience from from heavy defeats in the past, but it was still an experience, you know, and, and it was still a, an important element to have. And, and you need that element of experience. And funny you talk about that. You look at the Dublin age profile under Jim Gavin. Somebody done a very interesting thing, Stat. They nearly had a player at every age. Like they nearly had a 19-year-old, a 20-year-old, a 21-year-old, a 22-year-old, a 23-year-old. They nearly had a player at every age. And it's interesting. And as one went... One came in, you know, and it was an interesting process, you know, and obviously you don't have that luxury in other counties or other clubs, but it's an interesting process that he liked to have a balance, you know, and too many young lads in the team can be a problem. Too many old lads can be a problem. Trying to get that balance right, Shane. Thanks very much, Stephen. Appreciate it. Not a problem. My pleasure.